Hello, I'm Isabel Williams and I've been asked five questions, the first of which is tell us about you and your writing. I thought I had finished with translating the ancient Roman poet Catullus, but when lockdown came along it turned out that Catullus had not finished with me, so I completed my translation of his entire output and that is now available in one single volume which I called Switch, because Catullus is a switch. He oscillates between dominant and submissive. I've rooted the book in the world of Japanese rope bondage, also known as shibari, Japanese for binding. And I discovered the shibari world as a place to draw entirely by accident. Uh, it was a substitute for life class. And I've illustrated the book with some of my shibari drawings. To the professor who said that I put it in the shibari context and it sounds as if it shouldn't work, but it does, I have to say, why would it sound as if it shouldn't work? It's got a very big overlap with what Catullus does. And I've even got a list here. Um, for example, torture, emotional torture, performance, performance anxiety, attention seeking, power play, a master-slave relationship, albeit a modern consensual one, role reversal, posed victimhood, poetry, complicated rules, rhythm, total control of the medium, that's essential, beauty, emotion, and occasional eroticism. Don't take that as read. Talking of which, the book includes my chart of who shagged whom in Catullus. When I started doing this, I thought, blimey, why has nobody ever done this before? But as I got further down that sorry road, I, I realised it's actually quite elusive, quite evanescent. Um, for an awful lot of it, we only have Catullus's word for it. Question two, where is your favourite place to work? Home. Next question. Question number three, what's the latest book that blew you away? Well, I've just been going through some old family papers and I found the first book that I can actually remember reading, uh, which is this one, Frisk the Foal. And like a lot of books in our family, it's foxed secondhand. Uh, this one had actually had the cover ripped off before it came into our possession. And of course, as a child, I didn't see the ambiguity there in the title. Now my relationship with Japan has to be through translators and I was really pleased to discover this book, Travels with a Writing Brush, um, an anthology, items chosen and translated by Meredith McKinney from a thousand years of Japanese travel writing. Um, some excerpts from well-known pieces and some things that are utterly obscure, absolute treasures in here, including a number of works by one of my favourite authors of all, Anon. Storytelling panels here are, and my ring light says hello, the storytelling panels here are an absolute knockout. This is one of the Bon Dessiné volumes by Stéphane Huet of A La Recherche, and um, this is not supposed to be PowerPoint, it's just me sort of flashing things up quickly. And here we have the, the moment of the Madeleine, evoking all those memories. And here we have it, next page. I love these. Of course, it's not like drilling through volumes of Proust uh, in words only, but I think these are absolutely gorgeous. And this brings me on to... The next question actually, which is how did I feel while I was putting this book together? Now, there's something about the order of the poems by Catullus. We've inherited one specific order. No one is sure if he put them in that order or some genius editor or it was just random. But um, this is horribly controversial what I'm going to say now. I will be despised by many scholars because my reasons for saying so are not scholarly at all. They are entirely subjective and emotional. Um, I would say please leave the order alone because, uh, well, I, for example, tried to change the order. I tried to put boy poems in one group and girl poems in another group. Lost all the tension. Complete disaster. Um, I would say that the order which we have reflects 
the way we experience life with all the shadows and memories and coincidences. Question five, do you have a favourite piece in the collection? Um, I can't really pick out a favourite from Catullus's work. For me, it's increasingly like a sustained dramatic monologue. But the book itself, I've given it a lot of extras, uh, including a mini anthology to show how ubiquitous the bondage metaphor is. And I'd just like to choose one item from that, which is um, from Plato's short Socratic dialogue, Ion, uh, the translation by Benjamin Jowett from 1871. And it touches on human touch in the pandemic and the nature of inspiration. And every poet has some muse from whom he is suspended and by whom he is said to be possessed, which is nearly the same thing, for he is taken hold of. Finally, stay safe. Please don't try Shibari without proper instruction from a teacher such as Sophia Rose, whose website is Venus Hour and whose cat is called Nero. You can't escape the Romans. Thank you.